going to Trenny and C. He's Trenny. I'm C. Uh, it's Thursday night. It or is. Or at least for us, or for when this is being published, it's Thursday night. It's actually Friday for us. Yeah, you're right. It's actually Friday. This, the video has come out on Thursday. It is what you're trying you to say. You could be watching it at any right. time. Hopefully right. it's Thursday for you. Yeah. Um, and if 6 it is, Yeah. Who's yeah. like Santa Claus? Um, if it is Thursday night, I hope you're kicking back, getting ready for your Friday. Maybe having a little Thursday night celebratory dram. Grab one of these glasses or any something similar. Fill it up with anything. Doesn't matter. Just Thanks not. for stopping by, though. Yeah. Um, show the people. What are we okay. doing today? Today, we are doing the old, good old Glenmorangie. We got the uh, Bacalta. Uh, so, Bacalta okay. is part of the um, Glenmorangie private edition range. Oh, very So cool, they very put cool. out, this is a, this is a 2017 release. So they put out several of these one-off annual releases every year. They're kind of, they're kind of targeting, um, the big bands. Yeah. I think with these. The big fans. Um, yeah. but yeah, so they kind of do this whole one-off thing every year, which is cool. I like that idea of you know, your your favorite brand puts out these kind of interesting variations. If you're a big fan, you're probably buying all of Ma them. Makes it quite collectible. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll continue to spew knowledge. And I'll just pour some whiskey here. Cool. Some decent um, rims. So this is the um, Bacalta, which is finished in sun-baked Malmsey Madeira casks. Malmsey! So these are American oak casks. Uh, they're heavily toasted, and then they're seasoned with Malmsey wine. Malmsey wine? I've never tried so basically, Malmsey wine. I don't, personally. I've never had it. Yeah. So they take the cask, put a bunch of wine in it, leave the wine in there for a while, leave it in the sun, just cook it up, um, get that wood nice and seasoned with that yeah. wine in there. Then they ship the casks, well they empty them, empty yeah. the wine out. For sure. Where does the wine go? Who's drinking that wine? I don't know. Anyway. They dump the wine down the drain, yeah, probably, yeah. and then they ship those casks back to Scotland all nice and uh, sun-drenched, and, yes. yeah. and, um, and then so they stick this stuff after it's been in an ex-bourbon cask, right. they finish it off in those uh, baked mulms. Oh, okay, so these guys are kind of uh, probably mainly in the bourbon cask most of its life, and Correct. then the... Uh, there's no age statement on this. But it is believed to be around 12 years old. Oh. Okay. It does not say that, but it is believed to be around 12 years old. Cool. And this is um, the brainchild of Dr. Bill Lumsden, who is Glenn Morangie's director of distilling. The doctor. <laughs> you gotta do what the doctor says. <laughs> Doctor's orders. Doctor's orders. Um, just a little bit more information. Sure, go for it. Why not? We're all learning. <laughs> Not me. I knew this. I, I'm learning. I knew all this. Yeah. About 75 pounds. About 95 bucks US. That's so honestly pretty reasonable. For a scotch, yeah. For a 12 year old scotch. It's in the range. It's a specialty yeah. product, so it's going to be a little higher. So uh, it's non chill filtered. Doesn't say anything about color. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, E150A added. Yeah, probably. Assumption. If, hey, if it's not on the label, then chances are. <laughs> We're going to be back. We're going to be back with a segment. Trenny and C, drinking whiskey, describing all the flavors for you and me. Irish scotch, bourbon and fried. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. We're back. We've got a segment tonight. So, we haven't said it in a while, but I think everybody knows it. I'm going to put that away just for a second here. I think everybody knows that we are the house whiskey reviewers for the OMC. That's the oldmanclub.com. A uh, bunch of cool dudes who uh, share some, you know, they've got a Facebook group. There's a website, cool articles about... Uh, just things that um, are interesting to guys in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Yeah, it's a lot of kind of like that 80s generation and late 70s kind of thing. Like There's gaming the, stuff on there. Like there's, Star Wars, like Back to the Future movies. There's movies, there's gaming, there's interviews, there's us. Us. Um, probably the reason you're all there. 
Probably. Yeah. So anyway, but one thing that they do that's our favorite reason to go and visit is the hot babes of the week. Babes of the week. Um, so we're going to run down the hot babes of the week. We're going to flash the picture across the screen here. We're going to read it. We're going we're gonna to make a comment about that. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So let's check out babe number five. Wow. Oh, is that legal? <laughs> is she legal? Is she legal? Can she have a whiskey? Do you think? Maybe in Canada. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's check out number Ages four. Different. Number four. Woo! All right. Oh, those are real. Yeah, that's nice. Do you think that whole package is uh, natural? I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing. Yeah. It's just yeah. natural. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Mmm. That's my favorite hair color. <laughs> I love that color. Yeah. Yeah. The. Yeah. The light, how it hits it? <laughs> hits it perfectly. It does. I hit that. <laughs> Lightly. <laughs> Number two. Hmm. Whoa. Hmm. Holler. <laughs> holler. It says holler. I don't know. Okay. All right. And on our, on. Is this our favorite or is this just number one? This is just number one. Okay. My favorite. Okay. That's your favorite? Woo, I think so. That's your favorite? I liked how she was doing it. There. I like the pose. Yeah, the pose. I like the, the pose. way she was doing what she do. All the reflections. Everything. <laughs> Not reflections, shadows. Everything was in the right place. Yeah. Let's say that. Right place at the right time. Um, <laughs> but overall, what was your favorite? Probably number one or three. I'm going to go with uh, four. Four is good. I love four. Okay, well, hey, um, we haven't even touched this whiskey yet, and it's if you pretty... didn't know, we make the comments about the babes before we've seen the pictures. Yeah, so, we don't uh, know what they actually look like. Hopefully, the comments match the pictures, or hopefully not. I don't if know. not, it makes it probably better. Anyway, check out the OMC. Uh, lots of stupid stuff like trendy and C on there. Yeah. Okay, let's okay. check out this whiskey. So today we got the uh, Glen Morangy Balcata, the Malmsey Cask. You call it the Balcata, but it's the Bacalta. Bacalta, sorry, sorry. Or probably a much better Scottish pronunciation that we yes, can't do. Exactly. So, uh, so Glen Morangy is one of the first, and maybe the first, Scotches to actually do the secondary maturation in different casks. Mm -hmm. So obviously it started with the sherry casks back in the day. Wow. Um, and so now they have so that Obviously influenced the things. entire industry for Yeah, that, that started it. Forever and that ever. That started it, yeah. And Glen Morgie, is it not the highest selling scotch in Scotland? It sure is. A lot yeah. of people would think, especially from Canada, would think, oh, maybe it's Glen Livid or Glen Fiddick. Nope, Glen Morgie. And so the Scots, since they invented scotch, yes. um, you'd think they know what they're talking about. They probably do. Here's my thing. So, okay, color, nose, taste, mm -hmm. finish, and viscosity. This is a Golden, nice, beautiful hue to that one. Golden amber. Golden amber. Golden amber for yeah. sure. Okay, let's move on. Let's yep. just get right to the nose. Honestly, it's so rich. And I don't want to say <coughs> buttery. It's just... So I got a it's, big... It's dense. So it's a dense nose. I tried this um, scotch next to three other um, mid-range scotches, let's call them. Yes. Um, various ages, but mid-range. And I found that... This one had the biggest caramel toffee, huge ex bourbon influence. Yeah, in my opinion. And when I smelled it next to the other ones, I was like, "Wow, that's ex bourbon all the way because of that toffee and caramel." And it also, but it, one thing with this guy is, it's very malty. Like it's right off the bat, it's very malty, like a kind mm -hmm. of like a chocolate kind of malt to it. It's a bit toasty. There's there's some. There's some dried fruit notes in there. There is. I, I was thinking prune, kind of mm. prune notes. And it reminds me of, this is just a bit of a, rem, what, what it reminds me specifically of is our sherry barrel. Yeah. When we had our barrel with sherry in it, it reminds me of that, which yeah. I guess is that um, the, uh, the Malmsey. Yeah, it must be. This is also, again, bottled at 46%, so it's a little mm. bit higher. It's a nice percentage. Um mm. Yeah, it is. It's got a floral kind of chocolatey, malty, little bit of the. It, it's it just smells warm. Like it's like it would keep you warm in the winter kind of thing. I'll say this: there's a lot going on there, 
but I don't know that I really liked what was going okay. on there. Okay. I didn't love it. I'm saying there's depth of character, but I'm not sure I liked the character. Yeah. Okay. Like Sorry. watching a movie and you're like, well, well, well acted, but I hated the character. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a well-made whiskey. You can tell it's well-made. Um, it's quite a bit different and a bit more dense and rich in flavor than the regular Glenmorangie 10 year old. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but still has the characteristics of the Glenmorangie. The Absolutely. Spirit, it's the spirit Glenmorangie to the core. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, um, let's taste, taste it. Taste, taste it. Mm. It is very sweet. It is very barley sugar rich. Um, mm. Very good. Deep, rich. There is a saltiness to it though too. Yeah, it is. It's got sweet and salty going on. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really liking it right now. However... Having said that, it could be maybe the percentage, but there is a bit of heat in the flavor. I was gonna there say a bit of like a a bit a spicy hot, and tingly, a little hot, yeah, bit tingly and spicy, too. and not hot in a good way. I agree, really. But in general, the flavor and the the nose are quite nice on it. And I have black pepper as a note too, mm. which kind of goes in that spicy that goes with the kind heat, of thing yeah. going on. But there is some bourbon notes too. So, again, back to that bourbon that I mentioned earlier with the ex-bourbon huge influence. There's a nutmeg and a vanilla in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the vanilla for sure. A little bit of that honey is in there. Mm. It's also got a little bit of a mustiness to it, which is kind of nice, actually. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, let's move on to the, the finish. Um, with your saying on the, the taste there, the... The sweetness, like it's a big sweetness mm -hmm. to it. I the finish is drying like a wine dipped cigar. Yeah, slightly bitter. Yeah, slightly bitter, but also sweet, like kind of grapey sweet. You wrote grapey sweet, I got raisin. Oh. Yeah. Raisin. Hey, cheers. Cheers, these. <laughs> we um, don't compare notes first, so sometimes uh, it's nice to hear that we're on and, the same page. Yeah, and sometimes you say something and I'm like, Holy crap, how did I miss that? Like, that's exactly what it is. But exactly. it's hard to pull everything out. That's why it, it helps to, you know, you shouldn't be watching a whiskey reviewer if they don't have a partner. Yeah. I mean, one man cannot do this alone. No. This is not um, a one man job. Just uh, kidding. <laughs> just kidding, everybody that only reviews by themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there is a uh, another finishing note, warm, warm throat. Which, with this one, I specifically get a Warm Year's Warm Throat. Warm Year's Warm Throat. Uh, which so, I don't get with every whiskey. So, embarrassing... Well, I think of embarrassment when I think of Warm Year's. Oh, yeah, it does have that. <laughs> I got called up to the board and I didn't know the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Or okay. I had an erection, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Like, whatever. Whatever I was doing. So, um, the viscosity, we might as well go to viscosity here. It is quite thick and syrupy. And I, I put that I'm, it was fairly oily. Yeah, yeah. it is. And I think it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know what these Malmsey casks are all about, really. I don't know much about them. Yeah. But if the regular Glenmorangie is quite a light spirit, so for this to be so kind of thick and vis viscous in the mouth, mm. uh, I think that the casks obviously have a, a pretty big influence on it. Um, Seems like it. Anyway. Uh, um, I've got to say, though, yeah. um, I think in general... I'm personally just not a big Glen Morangy fan. Yeah. And I think that influenced the score. So we, Trenny and I, typically were within a few percentage points of each other. Um, we're pretty way off on this one. Yeah. Tell yeah, the people. Different. Okay, what, so what I am 28.25, which is pretty huge. 28.25 is on the upper echelon of, of quality for the year. Yeah. Uh, you gave it a 25.5. Which is, I think, looking at the board... Towards the bottom. Yeah. So you're at the top, I'm at the bottom. That's less than Jim Beam Black for you. Yeah. Wow. So, bring, so bringing that to an average of 26.88, which brings it whoop, right back into the kind of the lower middle. However, do you know what? One thing that's nice about having two whiskey reviewers is that it actually does kind of balance itself it does out. Temper Sometimes when you're way high and I'm way low, at least it's in the middle, yeah, which right. is probably more realistic. So, anyways, again, Trenny and C, thank you for joining us. Check us out more on YouTube. Click the next video, and we'll talk to you next time.